Hi, so as you can see, I have this sprocket here that are connected by this barrel. Now, as you can see, these two sprockets are on each of the roller chains. So there are two roller chains and the sprockets are meshing with each of those roller chains. Now, the way that I created this, I can show you is I can right click and I wanna open this on its own is basically I took a regular sprocket, the one that we had before, and I created extruded cutouts here. That way the screw over here, the flat head screw would not hit the uh, shape of the inner diameter. And so after I created those cutouts, what I did was I basically created a plane here right in the middle. So that's where the plane is. And I mirrored the sprocket from one side to the other. And I made sure that it was uh, between the two roller chains. And once I did that, I really just did an extrusion in order to connect them. So as you can see, like I just mentioned, I have two sprockets. They're connected with a barrel and they're both exactly where they need to be. If I take a measurement from the center point of this one, or really just from the end of this one to the end of this one, which is the same thing, it's two inches. And that's exactly the distance that we have between our two roller chains. So it's going to be uh, compatible. And the good thing about this is that this is hopefully going to be the driving uh, mechanism and so the next step is we need to create a hole here for our motor. So what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna come over to my data panel and I'm going to bring in the 124 revolution per minute econ gear motor, which we're currently using. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be the final motor, but it's gonna be the one that we're gonna use at least just for this example. So I'm gonna open this and bring it in going to just drag it right into the assembly. And once I have it in, I want to try to position it uh, so that it's effective. So I'm going to just rotate this like, like so. And I'm going to bring this to 90 degrees. And let me hit OK. What I want to do from here is I want to drag this into place. So we want to think about uh, the way that this is going to be used in the real world. Um, what I can do is I can click on this and um, I believe I need to rotate it again. So um, what I'm going to do is just move this. I'm going to just do another, whoops, another rotation here. Let me rotate this by 180 because I want it to be on, on this side. And that's our motor. And if you're wondering where I got this from, how I modeled it, basically uh, this is a motor that I got, I believe, from servocity.com. Either that or one of those popular hobby sites that sells motors and um, transmission, uh, power transmission, uh, gears and steppers and chains and all those sorts of things. Um, I can post a link to the description uh, if anyone's interested in that. So what we have here is we have our motor and we needed a tech to attach it to our um, sprocket cylinder. So one of the things that I might want to do is I might want to right click and just change the color. And I'm going to change this to be, let's say, uh, we could just make this brass, really it doesn't matter. We just want to distinguish them. You know, that's a terrible color choice because it blends in uh, with, the, with the tread pattern. All right, that's a little bit better. Uh, we have a brown. But if you come to, let's see, plastic, um, you can choose a, a, a much uh, better uh, material, either plastic or paint. We want to find, let's see here. Um, let's make this green. <clears throat> and we're just going to uh, get rid of that. Okay, so. Um, what we want to do from here is we want to uh, constrain these two. So I can kind of drag this around and I can drag this around too. Now I want to lock this in place, the bore. So right click, ground it. 
capture position and that's going to make sure that it doesn't move because we want the sprocket the the two sprockets um the this whole piece right here the green piece to be the controlling piece and we want our motor to attach to the controlling piece right now our motor is not constrained so the way to do that is we're going to come over to our joint and we're going to uh, basically uh, create a relationship between these two. Now we're going to make this a cylindrical constraint. So I'm going to click on this cylinder and I'm going to click on this cylinder and I'm going to hit OK. And once I do that, you can see that it's giving me a preview. So I'm going to hit OK. So this can only move in this direction now, which is what we want. Now, the reason why I did this and I didn't do, and I didn't make it say a revolute constraint is because I don't know how far in or out the motor is actually supposed to be. I don't know how far in or, or out it's going to be from the actual body of this whole tank uh, robot. So for that reason, I'm going to just have to leave it like this for now. And that's going to be okay. Um, but one of the biggest challenges that we're going to have um, within this whole thing is finding a way to, in real life, make sure that the cylinder of the motor and the um, sprocket actually attach so that they don't uh, rotate, you know, with it. So, so that way they're locked in place. Uh, for now, what we want to do is we want to find out the dimension of the um, circle. Uh, let me show you what that is. I'm going to come to measure. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to see that this is a diameter of 0.157. So what we can do is we can come over here to our uh, sprocket. I'm just going to call this the sprocket or the sprocket cylinder, something like that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to make this 0.157. And that's what we want, 0.157. So that's a 0.157 hole. And what I can do now is I can do an extrusion and we don't, again, we don't know how much of the uh, cylinder here is actually going to stay inside it. So uh, let me do a quick measurement here to see how, how long this is. Now the distance is 0.61. That's what it's reading out. So I'm going to make this um, just, just a little bit longer, as long as it's possible. So instead of 0.61, I'm going to make it 0.65. And this is going to be a cut operation. And it needs to go in the other direction. So 0.65. And as you can see, it's cutting into the uh, sprocket. And there we go. We have a hole now. And you're, of course, going to see that um, existing here. Um, unfortunately, just got to save this. And now we can get all latest. There's our hole. And so um, we can uh, just leave it at, like that for now. Um, we don't know how we're going to make sure that this is attached yet. So we're going to have to leave it like this. 